we have uh, we have uh, David Banks uh, with us now from again the FCC prison camp in Florence, Colorado. Uh, David, good morning. How are you? Good morning. I'm fine. It's good to be with you. Thank you very much. Uh, we just uh, had a conversation with Gary. Sam was just uh, finishing his comment. Um, in the limited time that we have with you, what is it that you want my audience to understand about what has happened to you as it relates to IRP solutions? First and foremost, uh, I'd like to say uh, in, in the case of the IRP-6, the government was fully aware of our business activities. Um, mm-hmm. In a proffer we submitted to the government, uh, which provided overwhelming evidence not only of our business activities, investment activities, uh, seeking investment, etc. The government was fully aware of who we were dealing with uh, in the federal government, what agencies we were dealing with. Uh, we went through, uh, we kept weekly and chronicle weekly activity reports of all of our business activity for approximately a year and a half to two years. So we have very detailed information we provided to the government with the proffer on what was going on with our company, including the stuff that was going on with staffing companies. Uh, Additional to that, we had a reasonable expectation of revenue at various points between 2002 to 2005, uh, but we kept getting strung along by the government uh, with repeated requests to see the software do more. At some point, we got kind of got caught in a catch-22, and obviously it was a very uh, frustrating situation to be uh, continue, uh, continuing to extend our company in debt uh, in anticipation of the government in uh, engaging in business. They, they had spoke about, at the end of 2003, uh, a $12 million pilot project. So we're working towards these types of goals in 2004, Our resource from the NYPD uh, said he anticipated us closing business with the NYPD at the the early part of 2004. So we didn't uh, just casually engage the company uh, uh, financially to go go into debt. We had uh, goals based on what we're being told from the Department of Homeland Security as well as our resources, uh, our resource there at the NYPD. So we made a decision to move forward uh, with this business in anticipation of, of $12 million engagement at the end of 2003 in business with uh, the NYPD in the early part of 2004. So if you all are developing a software solution that is desperately needed by Homeland Security and Homeland Security is loving what it is that you're developing, why, and this may be a, a, a stupid question, but did anyone from Homeland Security or did anyone from NYPD come to your defense and say, hey, hands off these guys. They're giving us what we need. No, uh, ironically, um, uh, the situation with that is when it was time for them to go to trial and even uh, substantiate what they put in email or what they put in an affidavit, everybody was hands off at that point. Um, uh, we come to find out that uh, we had conversations with this gentleman by the name of Bill Witherspoon uh, repeatedly during Homeland Security. Uh, everybody seemed to get scared once everything started turning toward, towards trial, but the email communications don't lie. Uh, what they told us it, it, it's just implausible that they were not uh, vigorously interested in the software. Um, and one final, uh, another point to that, at the end of 2004, around November 2004, uh, we were called back to D.C. where the Department of Homeland Security coordinated a meeting with the Department of Justice and uh, numerous agencies attended. FBI, Secret Service, Immigration and Customs, uh, Border Patrol, U.S. Marshals, all these people were there. And at the end of that meeting, the, 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 the gentleman, uh, Stephen Cooper, from the Department of Homeland Security, told us that the FBI liked your software. Uh, and furthermore, uh, the FBI's comments were made in the search warrant affidavit regarding the software. So for the government to come in and then say we didn't have software, um, they just 
went from one, one one level to another level to try to minimize and marginalize our software. Is this a case of larger software companies attacking? Is this the big fish eating the small fish? Yeah, I think it is because it was. It's kind of strange after the two thousand five raid, the government came, uh, in our opinion, to to retrieve the software. Uh, We didn't leave the software uh, on site at that time. Uh, The the investigation pretty much went cold. Uh, In 2007, they tried a grand jury. The grand jury wouldn't return an indictment. The grand jury wouldn't return an indictment on their original information. Then in 2009, we were in the city of Philadelphia, and we were competing against IBM, and I, I had spoke directly with the deputy mayor of, uh, his name is Everett Gillison, of Justice and Public Safety for the city of Philadelphia, and he had told us he was going to have IBM work with us because they were failing in delivering the search warrant capability of the software. We, we modified our, our search warrant module within two weeks, and we had them something working according to their procedures. After, shortly thereafter, because we're running up on the statute of limitations for any sort of crime, uh, the, US, uh, the assistant U.S. attorney, Matthew Kirsch, calls uh, uh, the inspector general of the city of Philadelphia and tells her an indictment is coming. And that right there ruined our business, and we felt like IBM, given that their, their, uh, their lack of desire to work with us uh, kind of... Uh, coordinated uh, this, this entire thing, the indictment, etc., because it, it, it's, it's, it's too coincidental to be anything else. Hey, David, on that point, didn't someone from IBM also go into one of the offices of, uh, of one of the IT offices at Philadelphia and, and basically with some newspaper article and stated something to the effect that are these the type of people you want to work with? That is correct, and that article came, uh, and that article is a very interesting piece. It came, it was issued by the FBI there in Denver about the raid on our business. Uh, and during the, dur- that, that, that article that was in the Gazette Telegraph, I think it was February uh, 12, 2005, that article stated uh, verbatim information from the search warrant affidavit, which was under seal. Mm. That that uh, that article came to be used. Uh, not only did uh, IBM use it, but the FBI agent John Smith, if that's his real name, actually we have fax evidence and fax records that he faxed the article to Greg Goldberg to let him know, and some in essence that take a look at this article and what we've done. I got to stop you there, but let me say, we need to go to a break. Stay with me. uh, Stay with me, David. I hope you're still with us when we come back. History is replete with the United States government using the media in order, planting articles in the press in order to, uh, to, to, to engage in their, in their dubious and devious behavior. It is 42, 42 past the hour. Keep it locked right here, Sirius XM 110. We're at 45, 45 past the hour. It's Lady Smith Black Mombazo playing a little, uh, a little music for you in, in memory of uh, Madiba, Mr. Nelson Mandela. And we're going to be talking about him in the last hour of this program uh, with Dr. Tony uh, Montiero from Temple University. Uh, we're going back to David Banks. Uh, I think you were uh, mark. Were you marketing in charge of marketing for uh, IRP? I was the chief operating officer. I handled a lot of the business-related activities um, and oversaw a lot of the business-related activities. And you're in uh, right now. You're calling us from the FCC prison camp in Florence, Colorado. Uh, you were sentenced. Is it was it seven to fifteen years? Eleven years. Eleven years. Yes, sir. And you're uh, this is you're into your second year now. Yeah, we're just about 17 months in right now. Wow. Wow. Um, you, you represented yourself at trial? Yes, yes, we did. And uh, Gwendolyn Solomon says you all did a very good job, uh, but there were problems with the trial. Uh, talk a bit about the problems that you had with the trial. Well, uh, problems with the trial, we, uh, uh, we were not afforded an opportunity to put really put on a, our defense, 
Uh, I think Gary might have mentioned to you with with the expert witness, uh, we had two of them from a, a gentleman owns a $300 million staffing company, and the judge simply would not let him testify. We also proved that uh, one of the things at trial that uh, we found ironic was the government uh, predicated their case on the fact that we made false statements to them about having a contract. But, in fact, when we, t- when we were able to impeach the witnesses, many of them and most of them said, well, I wasn't responsible for making the decision to do business with IRP. Our credit department was. Well, and then we also presented Dun & Bradstreet reports, et cetera. Well, businesses, as well as individuals, don't make decisions off a casual statement from anyone if it was made. These statements were never made. and email, There was no email to back that up, only the statements, uh, and what I would say lying statements of staffing companies, uh, stating what the government want, wanted them to say, but they, they didn't state that at trial. Um, well, the credit department, well, if we fill out a credit app and there was nothing wrong with the credit app and you chose to do business, where's the fraud? So a lot of that information was not allowed to come in. We have about 30 seconds. What do you, in, that, in those closing 30 seconds, what do you want my audience to know? I just want the audience to know, uh, as far as our justice system is, is concerned, uh, big business and the government, uh, at least in my opinion, is one big oligarchy, and, and they're, they're, they're one and the same. And there is no no rights. Every right you get in this country, you're gonna to have to fight for your rights. And and um, until we, a, a, as a people, okay, we we we've. Uh, well, I I think I can finish that statement, or maybe Gary, you want to. Until we, as a people, stand up and take control of our government or take our government back, we are continually going to be victimized by it instead of running it. 